So in today's notes, we're going to talk about or discuss the area and perimeter of regular polygons. And the term regular should mean something to you. So in any regular polygon, if you need to write it down for a review, we have all sides congruent. Therefore, right, all angles are congruent. So finding the area, we're going to start with area of regular polygons. It says that the center of a regular polygon is equidistant from the vertices. This distance from the center to its vertex is a radius of a circle circumscribed about or drawn about the polygon. So what that's saying is, again, the center, which is right here, the distance from the center to a vertex, so we have five vertices, So the distance from the center to any vertice, all those distances are congruent. And it's a radius of a circle. So if you line up your compass and put the compass point at the center of the polygon and your pen at a vertex, so let's tighten that up, you should be able to draw a circle around the polygon. And that circle, switching to the left, slightly off, that circle, right, is drawn around or circumscribed about our pentagon. Okay? So all of these distances are the same. The center of a regular polygon is equidistant from the sides. So remember, we measure distance, right, from the center to a side by lining up our ruler and making sure that it's perpendicular. So this segment, I'm going to draw all five, is congruent to this segment, is congruent to this segment, or distance. Lining up the ruler here. And then this one is already drawn. Okay, so let's note uh, that they're all congruent, say, with three lines. Okay. This distance is called an apothem of the polygon. Okay which is also the altitude of an isosceles triangle. So if we look at one of these triangles within our figure, so I'm just going to highlight one. Now it's a pentagon, five sides, so there should be five triangles within the pentagon. So if I'm looking at this one triangle, one of the five, it is isosceles, right? And this I this Apothem is also the height of that triangle. Okay? The center of a regular polygon is also formed by these two adjacent radii. Its measure is 360 over n. So the best way to represent this is say, let's sketch a hexagon up here. You can do your best to make it regular. Okay, so here's the center. We draw our six triangles. Okay. The central angle, which I'm going to call theta, so it's down here, it's noted as right here, so the central angle theta. Theta is just a Greek letter that stands for the angle measure. That theta is equal to 360 divided by n. In this case, it would be 360 divided by 6 because there's six angles because of the six triangles. And each angle would be 60 degrees. Okay? So 
The number of triangles formed by the adjacent right angle is equivalent to the number of sides. We mentioned that. The number of arcs formed by the intersection. So an arc, right, is part of the circle. So this arc right here, we have one, two, three, four, five arcs because we have a pentagon that forms the whole circle. The number of arcs formed um, is equivalent to the number of sides as well. So in degrees, the measure of the arc intercepted by the central angle is the same as the measure of the central angle. Well, um, if I were to draw the circle here, these six arcs, and this arc right here, I'll highlight that in green, would also be 60 degrees. Okay, and we'll talk more about this later on. The steps to finding the area of any regular polygon, with n being any number of sides, you first divide the polygon into triangles. Okay, if there's six sides, there's six triangles, and then eight sides, eight triangles, so on and so forth. Find the area of one triangle, then multiply the area of one triangle by the number of triangles or sides, n. For the perimeter, we just simply take the length of one of the sides and measure it by, and multiply it rather, by the number of sides it has. So that's our first example. Find the perimeter of the regular polygon. Well, if it's regular, okay, here, this one side is 12, so that means all sides are 12. How many sides do we have? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the perimeter is going to be eight sides of length 12, which is 96 units. In number two, it says if the perimeter of this polygon below is 97.3, find the length of a side. Well, how many sides do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we knew that to find the perimeter, we had to take uh, seven and multiply it by the side length. So if I replace the perimeter of 97.3, we can solve for the side length, S. Divide by 7, and 13.9 equals S. So our answer is 13.9 units. All right, number three. I'm sorry about that triangle. It bled through. Now we're going to switch to the area. The first thing I'm going to do is take this polygon and divide it up into triangles. So if there's six sides, I should have six triangles. So from the center, we draw the segment to, again, its vertex. So a segment from the center to all vertices. All right, so let's use this triangle right here. We'll use the orange pen. Now, they told us it was regular, right? And they gave us the side length over here is 10. Well, they're all 10. So if you want to put them all in as 10, you can do so. So the area of this orange triangle. Well, area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So 1 half of a base times the height, remember, which is also the, called the apothem. Well, half of 10 is 5, and 5 times 5 radical 3 is going to be 25 radical 3. Now, within the hexagon, so if I want to find the area of the hexagon, that's going to be 6 times 25 radical 3 because there's six triangles, and all the areas are the same. Six times 25, we'll leave the radical three alone, is 150 units squared. Down below in number four, 
it says that if the area of this regular polygon is 82 and a half, find the length of the apothem. So let's call that X. Okay. So there's five sides. We should have five triangles. So again, from the center, we draw a segment to each vertex. Okay. And I'm going to just look at this triangle right here because the altitude's drawn. So this would be 2.2. Now, in just generalizing or thinking about how we find the area of this pentagon, we would take the area of one triangle and multiply it by 5. So if the area of the pentagon, we substitute, it says it's 82 and a half. Again, area of the triangle times 5. So divide 82 and a half by 5. Turn this up so you can see it. We get 16 and a half as the area of the triangle. So now using what we know, area of a triangle is one half base times height. So 16 and a half equals one half base of 2.2 times height x. So a half of 2.2 .2 is 1.5. I don't know I'm doing that on the calculator. So 16.5 equals 1.1x. Divide 16 and a half by 1.1, and we get 15. So the length of the apothem is 15 centimeters. You want to include a unit when possible. Okay, now moving to the coordinate plane. So the endpoints of one side of a regular hexagon are 1, 4, and 7, negative 4. What is the perimeter? Okay, so remember perimeter is the number of sides times the side length. Well, we can calculate the side length by calculating the distance, right, of our side. Distance formula, if you grab your um, spiral bound index cards is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So 7 minus 1 is 6, 6 squared, 36. Negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8 squared is 64, and that would be the square root of 100, which is 10. So now if it's a hexagon, the perimeter is going to be 6 times 10, which is 60 units. All right, last question. Is our boxing method for the area of a triangle? Now, the area of a triangle, as we said, the form is one half base times height, but I don't have a perpendicular base and height here. Okay? I could say this was the base and then draw in the side perpendicular or calculate where it would be um, intersecting and draw it, so on and so forth. But that's just too much work. There's an easy way to do this. What we do is, is we box in this triangle. So line up your straight edge with point B, go right down below C, and draw a line over to right below A. Go directly above C to line up with A to the left. Draw the line down, draw the line down from A, and then draw the line across. So we just created a rectangle. Okay, so what we're going to do is, is we're going to calculate the area. So I'm just going to shade of this triangle. We're going to calculate the area of this triangle as we're in the coordinate plane and this box indicates a 90 degree angle and that's a 90 degree angle. So every triangle that I have created when I boxed in a given triangle is a right triangle. Okay? 
So we find the area of all of those triangles. And then we're going to subtract the area of all three triangles from the rectangle. So let's first start by calculating the area of the rectangle. That's length times width. So let's count the squares. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this side is nine times this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 9 by 11 is an area of 99. Now for work, I'm going to call this triangle 1. This is a 9 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that means that that's 11. This must be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Good. This side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's 9. This must be 1, 2, 3, 4. And it is. Call it triangle 1, triangle 2, triangle Three. So the area of triangle 1 is 1 half of base times height, so 1 half of 6 by 9, half of 6 is 3, 3 times 9, 27. Area of triangle 2 is 1 half of 5 by 5, well 5 by 5 is 25, half of 25 is 12 and a half. And then area of triangle 3 is 1 half of 4 by 11, so 2 times 11, 22. Now, all triangles, so the sum of the areas is 27 plus 12 and a half plus 22 is 61 and a half. So the area of triangle ABC equals 99 minus 61 and a half. So the area is 37 and a half units squared. And that is it for today.